Hey folks, I'd mentioned when I did that tubing bending video that I was going to use our new four foot hoop bender and four foot hoops to build a new arbor design. I think it'll be a lot more streamlined and uh, simpler. So we need to bend one more pipe. I have three of the four foot hoops over here already bent and then I have some of the the three foot two inch by four inch wire fencing that this was around our honey berries. So we had our honey berry bushes all all wrapped with the 10 foot a little over 10 foot I guess rings of this stuff to keep the the deer from browsing on them when they were shorter but now they've outgrown their their uh, cages so we're gonna have to figure out a new way to do that but so anyways I, this is what I'm going to use for this arbor it's not a new new material but it's good enough so we need to bend one more pipe and if you remember we're measuring up 20 inches I put a mark at 20 inches stick it in the bender slide it up till that 20 inch mark is at the end of the bender and then pull it not pulling it so far that we pull it past the end of the bender and and put a crimp in it push it forward about a foot or so pull it towards you again and again remember we got to keep this flat keep that flat on the trailer blade or, or trailer bed or whatever your work surface is so that uh, you know, the thing doesn't end up corkscrewing on you. Okay, we'll just keep going. And as we approach that tw other 20 inch mark, we'll push it forward till that 20 inch mark will align with the, the end of the bender. And then because like the chicken cage, that six foot hoop that I made, that we use for the chicken cages, the bottom part needs to be vertical. And that's going to be the case with this arbor also. So what I'm going to do then is kind of tweak it past a little bit. And that should help help the hoop have, have a vertical part. And then since you, could, you need to do it on this side, of the bender only I'll I'll reverse the hoop push it through and then I'll do the same to the other side just just tweak it past just a bit and that'll help give it a, give it vertical legs so we're gonna we're gonna add legs to these now these hoops they're not all identical so you can just kind of push them and pull them and configure them so that they they pretty much all match but now we have four and I can see right now this one probably got a little overzealous with my bending at the ends but good enough all right next we're going to attach the, the fencing so I just laid one of the hoops on the trailer bed and then just drape the, the fencing around it. So it's a really civilized way to, to attach this stuff and keep it all fairly straight. And I'm just using these eight inch cable ties to attach it. And these are the extreme ties. Go to minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 185 degrees. I don't think we'll hit the 185, but the minus 40, yeah, that's, that's possible. But the big thing is they're UV resistant. So I'm just kind of get kind of guessing to get it fairly well centered because this fencing is a little bit longer than 10 feet so it's going to drape past the ends of the hoops on each side but but that's okay. So we'll just go ahead and and attach these oh I'll say every 2 feet or so. And we'll get and then we'll go from there. Well, I went ahead and I attached the, the mesh to the one side and then I just flipped it over on the trailer 
and laid the hoop on the bed and then just did the same on the other side. So, you know, this is old used fencing and it's not straight, not great to work with and everything else. So it's a little, a little cockeyed, but it's, it's pretty good. It'll straighten out. So we're going to bend, or not bend, <laughs> we're going to cut two lengths of the half inch, right in half, at, at the five foot mark. And these are going to become our four legs. <laughs> Speaking of four, I don't know why I thought I needed four hoops. I said, I only have three. Well, you only need two to make a, an arbor. But I must have been thinking I was going to make four of them or, or two of them. Or, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to measure five feet and I'm going to use a, just a pipe cutter to cut. You get such a nice clean cut using that and there are no burrs on it or anything and um, it, it takes a little while but I only have two cuts to make. So we're going to cut these pipes and then what we're going to use to connect the legs to the top part are these set screw, uh, just these uh, couplers. They're for half inch conduit there. They're really nice and they're so inexpensive. I think a, a bag of, of five is like less than two dollars. And then we're going to use these one inch self-tapping lath screws. I'll zoom in in a bit here and show you all the, you know, the close-ups of all of this. But, but then we're going to attach our, our cross pieces which tie this whole works together. And I actually cut these last year when I was going to make an arbor and I never got around to it. Thankfully I didn't because I'd have made the old style and then I wouldn't have been able to show you this one. But anyways, what I cut this from is cedar, just rough sawn cedar. It's a, they call it a one inch, it's actually 15 sixteenths. And a 10 foot one by six ripped every, you know, they're ripped like an inch and five eighths, I think is what I do that to maximize the width. And with cut, ripping them, you get three lengths and then from each length you get three. So you get nine of these. And these are 38 inches. You cut them to 38. And then I, I mark in an inch and three eighths because we want our our, our pre-drilled holes for the screws to be 35 and a half inches apart because they're going to center on that conduit because this is a 36 inch wide arbor. So I, I, uh, I just mark in an inch, let me verify that, it's an inch and three eighths. an inch and three eighths, and then I pre-drill holes that are, that are a little bit, at least the, the diameter of the screws, and perhaps even a little bit, bit uh, wider than the screws, because you, want, you don't want the screws to be drilling into the wood, you want them just to be tapping into the metal. And then I countersink uh, about a quarter inch in, so that the head of the lath screw will uh, we'll be seated in there and then we can get away with the one inch lath screws. Now, if you have longer lath screws, you just don't want a, a screw so long that it's gonna go through both sides of the tubing. So, with that, we'll, we'll cut our legs and then start putting this thing together. So we're starting at the top, right down the center here of the mesh. <coughs> putting that first set screw in and then we're going to go, we're going to count 24 of our two inch by four inch squares, 24 of them between each of our slats. And that's what we did on our other arbors and that gives us pretty much a nice spacing for all nine of these. I just went and grabbed a couple spring clamps. I forgot that's how you do it. 
How I got along without spring clamps, I don't know. They're just like having a another person helping you. Just another set of hands. But you can just spring clamp that that slat to the to conduit that holds it right in place and then just These self-tapping screws will drill their own holes. So and the spring clamp keeps that from slipping. So I will do the same on the other side. Count 24 inches. So count you know 24 of those and set the next one. And we'll probably set one more and then we'll we'll put our legs on. Next we're going to put our legs on and as I said I would show you this this type of a half inch coupler they are I think really attractive you know they're they're such an easy way to connect the conduit and they're more attractive than some of the other types that are out there but it's just a set screw design so you just Attach. All right, and we'll go ahead and put all four of our legs on. So now with all four of our legs on here sticking out, we need to finish off with our mesh. Ah, oh, stinking wind! <laughs> we just can't get up, get over it. So it's you know five feet all the way down to the bottom and I think on the other ones I had them setting so I could put a planter underneath them uh, I'd have to measure but I think I'm going to leave about two feet at least let's see yeah so this fencing is three feet wide so I think I'll just cut two pieces three feet by three feet and attach those and that'll give us long enough legs without mesh that we can stick these things you know half a foot in the ground or, or more a foot in the ground and and still have room if we want to stick a planter underneath it. so I'll cut some mesh so I got all of the mesh on I got all of the slats on I ended up using the the cage clips just because we have it from the old 4-H rabbit hutch days. I miss those days probably more than the kids do. But we're ready to flip this thing up see how we did. Okie dokie. Well, kind of on level ground here, of course. You know, once it's set, it's kind of flimsy right now, but once it's set in the ground, they're, they're plenty sturdy. Let's see what we got for height. about eight and a half feet so say it's set set in the ground a foot that'd be you know seven and a half let's see seven feet eight inches so you know it's basically it's basically the same thing it's perhaps let's see kind of flared out a little bit but you know that's these are the four foot hoops but we kind of widened them a little bit so it's it's a, almost the same width now those are a full five feet 
these aren't quite here, four and a half. But now the nice thing about these, as opposed to like the cattle panels, which are what a lot of people use, and I think they're really cool looking. I, I like them, but we don't have any way to transport them. A 16 foot cattle panel, you know, you need a pretty substantial trailer. Be <laughs> flopping off the back of our eight foot trailer, that's for sure. And then the other thing is, you know, they're a little unwieldy. They're, they really only have one use and you can't, if you're done with them, you can use them for cattle panels, I suppose, but you can't, like this, you could just take it apart. You could just use the, the hoops as garden hoops or whatever. And say you, you want to move or you want to move your arbors and all of that. These are, are much more portable. And you can probably make one for probably not much more than a, a cattle panel or such. But anyways, now I got to figure out where to put this thing. Peggy's been itching to plant these beans that we got from some friends out in Colorado. They're a vining, a pole bean that we haven't had an arbor. Now we do. So, well, uh, I'll let you know where I put it. So until next time then, this is Mark again with Backwood Basics. Let's grow together. <laughs>